physics we are discussing about laser and optical fiber myself dr sandeep desai department of basic science and humanities kids college of engineering kolhapur today we will discuss about different types of laser lasers are classified based on various ways one of the classification based on material used for the formation of laser it is as follows we have solid state lasers examples ruby laser nd agi laser then gas laser example helium neon laser carbon dioxide laser and semiconductor diode laser wherein semiconductor materials are used for the formation of laser like gallium arsenide laser indium phosphide laser along with this lasers are also classified based on the output power which we get from it like high output power lasers medium output power lasers low output power lasers so there are various ways to classify the lasers out of these all lasers in this session we are going to discuss about ruby laser so ruby laser is a solid state laser and it was the first laser which was invented in 1960 by th maiman theodore harold maiman was an american engineer and physicist who was credited with the invention of laser and his invention actually led to subsequent development of many other types of laser the laser was successfully fired on may 16 1960 you may see in the slide the picture of first laser which was made by th maiman firstly we will discuss about the construction of ruby laser have you heard about the word ruby yes A ruby is a precious stone that is mostly used in ornaments in jewelry and etc you might be seen it so ruby is actually composed of aluminum oxide which is alum and that is whitish in color but in ruby actually few of the aluminum ions those are get replaced by fraction of chromium ions and because of this chromium ions this whitish color alum got slightly pink color so we have to take this uh, precious stone then we have to make it in a proper form of as you see in the figure in cylindrical shape we have to grind it polish it then one of the face of this cylindrical rod ruby rod grind it polish it and silverize it so that it becomes fully reflecting surface and the face from which we want to get a laser that we have to keep it as partially reflecting one then this rod is winded over by a xenon flash tube xenon flash tube is simple as our uh, cfl or fluorescent tube like that which is a white color source of light emitting light in form of flashes very high frequency flashes and that is connected to a high tension power supply this whole thing then we have to keep it in an evacuated glass tube also while working it get heated so we need to have a cooling system after we put on the source on we get a laser light from the partially reflecting wall of this ruby rod which is having wavelength 694.3 nanometer now how actually we get this light that to understood we need to understood the working of ruby laser working of ruby laser we can understood in a better way by using an energy level diagram remember here in ruby laser the active centers are chromium ions we have so we are going to draw this energy level diagram for chromium ions before putting this laser source on chromium ions are present in their ground state when we put that xenon flash tube on it emits actually white light and you know that white light is composed of all the colors that is vip jar violet to red violet indigo blue green yellow orange red all these wavelengths with different different energy that is present in this white light so out of this different energies this chromium ions are responsive to only blue and green 
color wavelengths. That means they absorb only the energy of blue and green color wavelength. And by absorbing this energy, they are get excited to an excited energy level E2. As they get excited to this excited energy level E2, you know that at this energy level, they can't stay for very long time. Lifetime for which they can stay here in this excited state is 10 raised to minus 8 second, which is very, very small. So from this excited state, they immediately fall down to an metastable state. In this metastable state, they stay for 10 raised to minus 3 second. So actually, the population inversion of chromium that takes place in this metastable state. The energy which is radiated here in this transition, generally you find it is in form of heat. Wave. So that we need a cooling system and all. Now after this what happens? If by a chance this chromium fall down to a ground state from E3 to E1 state, it emit a photon of energy H nu. And this photon may further do the stimulated emission of other chromium ions. And in doing so, there are in one transition, two photons are emitted. Now these two photons may again stimulate another chromium to do the lower energy state transition. So here total four photons are emitted. That is two photons because of these two transition and along with that these two. So total four photons are emitted. These four may further do four more stimulated emissions. So photons out of that we get total 8, 8 becomes 16 and this process goes on happening continuously. So number of stimulated emissions produce so that all those photons together able to amplify and increase the intensity of the light. Now these photons with that intensity when they get incident on this partially reflecting wall and if their energy is not enough to cut and pass this partially reflecting wall, those are get reflected back. And again, doing their reflection from partially reflecting wall to this fully reflecting wall, further again they do more and more stimulated emission. So the number of photons that increases so that their amplitude and so that their intensity. But now here what we have at this end, fully reflecting surface. And this definitely will not allow this to pass through it. So again, these photons are get reflected back. So in transition from this fully reflecting wall to partially reflecting wall, the number again increases. And once their energy becomes too high enough to cut this partially reflecting wall, it come out from this partially reflecting wall as highly monochromatic, intense, directional, a beam of light to which we are called as laser light. The wavelength of this ruby laser is 694.3 nanometer or in angstrom you may say 6943 angstrom. So I hope you understood now the construction and working of ruby laser. After learning this, can you hear able to answer few important features of this ruby laser? What are those? So features of ruby laser. The first important feature of ruby laser is, remember, in a ruby laser, even though aluminum oxide is a host element, more in number, but that fraction of chromiums which are present in it, that is an active center. Because of its excitation and de-excitation, we get the laser light. Second important feature of it is, it follows a three level pumping scheme as you see in this working of ruby laser. Then xenon flash tube that is used for pumping purposes. So we can say it is an optical pumping and it is a red color flash type pulsating laser which has wavelength 694.3 nanometer. Efficiency of this ruby laser that's why we find it is very poor. I hope you understood now construction and working of ruby laser. Thank you.